Right. This is the Masao parody test. I'm going to try and cook some shrimp chips today. And let's see here. We got shrimp chips, or as they like to call them, prawn crackers. Uh, let's see. You can get these at any Asian grocery store you want. Kind of hard to find. But if you can find them, they'll come out in a package like this. And they'll be somewhat clear and... and uh, you can't eat them like raw because they're they're too hard and uh, see so you, you see the surface is scratchy and uh, they're very very brittle they're they're very strong you can't break them very easily oh well that one that one's an exception uh, I guess they don't this don't seem like something you could eat normally it's uh, very unusual I, I'm not sure how to describe them but uh, I guess we have a, a package of chips here and uh, what you got to do is you have to get some oil on, on a stove and with the oil uh, I use a vegetable oil if I can because it, it tastes better it has more fat than canola oil though but that's alright in case you wondered I have the camera on my shoulder and you don't want too much oil but we're gonna use a little saucepan here generally uh, if, you, if you're cooking the shrimp chips like if this was in the pan uh, you don't want it so the oil is too deep because you can use a lot less oil and save money But this bump in the middle of this pan it makes it a little difficult, but I'm going to do it anyway, so uh, We're going to add some oil Just a little bit See that that right there would be plenty And I don't really know if the brand of oil makes any difference. I I don't even know how they make oil. It's it's a mystery to me. I'm, I don't think you can squeeze vegetables and get oil out of them. I know you can cook meats and get some oil. All right, this is a gas stove. It's a little bit different than an electric, but uh, about the same idea. So with a, a gas stove, you've got to be careful because it will just spew gas everywhere. And while it's doing that, you need to light it. And if you let the gas spew, it'll explode. And we don't want that. So yeah, hit the start. Boom, fire. And to heat the oil up, it's going to take a little bit, a few minutes. But uh, while, we're, while the oil is heating, and get the get the little drying rack because these things are quite greasy. I'm pretty sure they're terrible for you, but I don't seem to care too much. So we have a little rack we can put on the counter. It's okay if the oil drips on the counter; it's easy enough to clean when it's it's warm. Just don't let it sit there too long. Now with the shrimp chips, they they don't tell you much on the box, but uh, they say boil vegetable shortening in pan, fry shrimp slices in oil for just two seconds. Well, that's, that's pretty straightforward, but they don't tell you how hot to get the oil. And um, well, it turns out the first time I did this was quite a disaster. The oil was too hot, and these guys, they, they burned to a crisp. It was horrible, they exploded. But uh, I found that the oil at a lower temperature I'm, I'm going to guess it's about 315 Fahrenheit because I have no way to measure temperature in this kitchen is about right and so let's see uh, if we're gonna get started I have to have a utensil to get the shrimp chips out and uh, I use two wooden fake chopsticks because well you can see the ends are burnt as I've used them multiple times if I had these used to be stuck together but apparently they melted and I'm yet to be enthusiastic enough to use them as they're supposed to be I suppose I could get a rubber band. I wonder if I have one floating around here. I think I do, but this oil shouldn't be too hot. Like the flame, the flame is the heat. So the, the more flame you see, the more heat is happening. It, it makes sense, but sometimes with gas, since you only have a hot flame and you don't really control the temperature, but just how much temperature is happening, things get a little sticky. I'm going to see if I can find a See if I can find a rubber band. I remember seeing some on my floor. Oh gosh, what a mess. This is my life. Uh, it's ending one minute at a time. Uh, oh, stupid computer. Uh, rubber band. Are there rubber bands over here? No, no. Keys and money and shells. Uh, no rubber bands. I saw rubber bands. Oh, where did they put them? Meanwhile, the oil is probably at the right temperature. Maybe I should just give up. 
have to find a rubber band another time. Well, here's the oil. It's very exciting, isn't it? Just kind of um, warm. Well, it looks like we can might throw a chip in, so here's the cool part. Got your shrimp chip. Drop it in there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Bam. It fries. And then as soon as it gets crunchy, you try and get it out of there as fast as you can. And there you go. That's a shrimp chip. And it's oil's too hot because you can see the brown edges. See how it's brown right there? It's not what we want at all. So we gotta let that oil cool a little bit. So we can fry these chips for a while. Yeah, they, they should not be brown around the edges. The oil is too hot again. I've screwed up once more. Way too hot. It fries them quicker, but uh, all that smoke. I'm going to turn on this fan. Boy, that fan doesn't really have much power at all, does it? It's uh, quite quite low powered fan. Now this is just great. Now there's smoke but no fire. So I guess where there's smoke there isn't always a fire. Um, now oh, that'll work. I'll wait for the oil to cool off. Fry a few more of these chips. And uh, uh, look how that looks. Oh wait, wait. I'm frying things. If you're going to fry anything, wear safety goggles. Because you never know just exactly when oil will splash into your eye. You might end up blind like I am. But, uh, who knows. Point is, you should play it safe in the kitchen. If you're going to be blending or moving things around quickly, safety goggles are a good idea. They were invented for a reason, but I suppose if I was really going to do this, chemical goggles would be best. Say, these are, these are coming out quite nice. You can see how it takes them a little bit more than two seconds, and it's all white, just like it's supposed to be. Everything is white on this chip. There's still a little bit of oil in it, but that's what you want them to look like. So here we'll uh, put the heat back on so the oil doesn't cool, but it's a very low heat. And there's a lot of chips to cook, so I guess I better come up with some sort of topic. Uh, actually, prawn crackers are very interesting. The way they are made is they take a bunch of shrimps and they squish them into a, a wafer. But they don't just squish shrimp, they, they add cornstarch to it. So this is basically just shrimp and some cornstarch that's been pressed into a disc and cut. Well, they press them into cylinders and then slice them thinly using a machine. So that basically means I'm eating shrimp, but it turns out that these shrimp are not high quality shrimp, so they're a little bit more fatty than your normal shrimp you could get at a, a seafood store. Um, the, the shrimp themselves are quite tasty. The, the chips have a very meaty flavor and I don't know of anything in America that's similar except for uh, maybe the the pork rinds. The the pork rinds they have down in Louisiana are a pretty similar process, but but they use uh, pork fat and a lot of oil at a very high temperature for a long period of time, which gives them that disgusting, unique flavor. These, however, are lighter and simpler. And as far as I understand it, when I was uh, looking up on the internet about these. Uh, you can uh, make these with just about any type of seafood you want.